Hi guys and welcome back to the channel, I'm David. I managed to pop home recently for the weekend and I assembled a Wally stock box. I decided as I'm collecting more rolling stock over the coming years, I thought it'd be a good idea to look at different storage solutions. Um, this video will be a bit of an overview of how you assemble it, as well as a bit of a review at the end. Overall, I am very impressed with the product and I think I will be going forward and buying quite a few of these to store my rolling stock collection. So out straight out of the box then, you get a couple leaflets, uh, obviously your order information and then all of the laser cut cardboard. Unfortunately no instructions, which I thought was a little bit odd. It is quite self-explanatory, but I did end up checking a couple of uh, YouTube videos to see how to put this together. So I thought it was a little strange there's no diagram of how, how to assemble this. So the first thing to do is just to uh, pop out all of the little cardboard pieces. Um, they're sort of totem shaped and there is quite a few to pop out and it, it did take me a little bit of time just sat watching YouTube and getting these all out. So once they're all out of the way, it's time to start folding the box together. So you just want to fold along all of the creases. Um, as I wasn't quite sure which way these were all folding together at first, I just folded them both uh, in both directions just to get everything flexible and, uh, and bendable into shape. And I think this is a good idea. Now, these are dashed laser cut lines along the cardboard, so they do bend quite easily. I tried a few methods. Um, I did try using a ruler and I tried bending over the edge off the table. Here I am just trying to work out which way to fold them. So yeah, I did try a ruler and, and the edge of the desk there, but I think I found the best way was just to get a fingernail uh, behind the bend and just really control where you're applying pressure. Um, I didn't actually mess up any of the creases, so it, they do fold together quite easily. Um, but yeah, it's just a case of focusing your pressure on where the laser cut lines are. You can see here you've got to get two folds very close together to form basically the front of the shelf. Okay, so once you've got all of the, the dashed lines folded, this is the shape you're after. So you've got all the different shelves there sort of concertinaed together. Moving that to one side, we've then got these sideways spaces, the sort of vertical spaces, and they fold together in much the same way. So you've got a double crease right next to each other. And then you just want to fold it nice and flat. I use the table to make sure it is all level. Okay, so the next stage is really just to put these side pieces in. They slot together, sort of um, two grooves going together, a little bit like a woodworking joint. You just got to get them lined up and do this for both sides. So you need two of these side pieces on the outer edges. And this starts to form the rigid structure of the shelves. And now the next stage is to come along with a hot glue gun. If you don't have a hot glue gun, I really would recommend buying one for this and for other projects really. I bought this one for around five pounds from the range in the UK, um, as I didn't have access to my normal one at my girlfriend's university flat. Um, so I literally just popped it out to the range, got this for five pounds and it does the job. All you're trying to do is just put some glue along the seams on the outside edges, as you can see, and this holds, uh, holds the shelves rigid so they don't flex around and bend. The other most important area really is to glue on the top and bottom flaps. You'll see they just bend up nicely onto the side frames. If you don't glue these in, you risk picking up the shelf and everything on the top and bottom shelf will just fall out when you pick up the insert. So there we are. Be careful if you're uh, smoothing out the glue like, like I am there. The glue ga can get quite hot and you can burn your fingers. I also decided to come along on the back side um, and fill in all the gaps just with a few beads of hot glue. Now this might not be necessary, but I just found it, it held some more rigidity in the center of the shelves. I just made a really good solid construction. Okay, so once I'd smoothed the glue out on the backside there, it was time to flip it over. And you can see that is one insert formed. Now you need to repeat this twice to get the two inserts. And this is what stores your rolling stock. Now giving it a quick test here, with my lovely Helgen Class 33 and the Lima Parcels Coach there. They both fit very, very well top to bottom. Perfect spacing to be held nice and snug without risking damaging any details. Now, 
you've got these extra inserts. These are designed to hold wagons apart, and I'll talk about these more in a second. But I found it fitted perfectly around the Class 33, but just not enough space there for the parcels van. Okay, so just adding some more rolling stock here. We've got a few goods vans, brake vans, uh, a nice Mark 1 coach down at bottom, a Class 08 shunter. And you can see perfect spacing top to bottom there, and plenty of storage room. So for the final assembly, you get the main sort of outer box, and you've got to slide in your two shelves. So here is the second one I ended up making, and this is filled with Batman Mark 1 coaches. Perfect fit there. Really, really nice and snug. Then in between the layers, you've just got this nice filler piece. This will just protect any detail or any paintwork. Before you slide on the upper shelf, this is the one I filled a second ago, so you can see the coach there, the locos and rolling stock. And then finally, another filler piece before you close the lid. So overall, I am very, very impressed with the quality of this box. The cardboard is nice and strong and very well cut, either laser cut or whether it's with a machine blade. I had no problems really assembling it, it did go together quite well and all the folds were relatively easy once I got the hang of it. I do strongly recommend assembling with hot glue as it just held it together much more rigidly than if there was no glue at all. And I think it is probably the easiest choice to, to use as it does add a bit of strength. Overall, I'm not too sure if I want to store my locos in these or just keep to the rolling stock, but I will be purchasing a couple rakes of coaches uh, and a few goods trains over the next couple of years. And I think these are a really good choice to be able to store things off of your layout, but have easy access to them without getting into the uh, original brand packaging. As for locos, again, they're a little bit heavier. Um, and although the cardboard shelves are very, very strong, I feel like I would feel a bit more comfortable leaving those in their manufacturer's boxes but that might just be me i think plenty of people would be happy storing locomotives in these boxes as well my other major concern is the inserts that go vertically in between rolling stock items the spacing just seems to be a little bit odd to me um i'll get some photos here from google you can see how it's meant to go forming the sort of grid to go in between your wagons now this would stop them rolling back and forth and also stop buffer clashes and couplings linking together in the box which is quite handy however i found it was a strange length and it didn't really perfectly fit around any of my rolling stock um having to make a compromise and also there seemed to be no way to have one shelf section longer than the other you kind of had to have all of your shelves divided into the same equal blocks I might look into this in the future, whether you can cut the cardboard in a certain way or whether I can 3D print a different insert that will make this easier to do. But for now, I'm just leaving no um, verticals and just leaving the horizontal shelves in. To conclude then, I think I will be buying a few more of these to store my future rolling stock collection in. They are good solid boxes and they do have plenty of storage capacity. I'll put their capacities up on the screen now. I think it's about 10 coaches per box or 50 wagons, which is very, very good going. As for future videos, um, this month I've got a few little plans going on. I'm thinking of DCC sound fitting, my locos possibly, um, and I also might be looking into starting some little dioramas that will go towards any future layout I build. Unfortunately though, this is quite an important month for me at work, um, with some big assessments coming up towards my career. So I might be a little bit quiet. We'll just have to wait and see how everything goes. Thank you so, so much for watching. Please feel free to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.